Hello and welcome to this session where I'm going to be talking about the Brown Executive Function and Attention Scales. My name is Carolyn Hughes. I am one of the assessment consultants at Pearson Clinical Assessment. Just going to share my screen with you so you can see my contact details. So if you ever wanted to book a meeting with me or if you had any questions about any of our tools, please feel free to get in touch. Hopefully you can see um, my email address on the screen there. OK, so let's get started. So um, an update of the Brown ADD scales, the Brown Executive Function attention scales helps screen and assess a wider range of impairments of executive functioning. So the Brown EFA scales, we'll shorten it for the for the purpose of this session, um, measures it measures the DSM-5 symptoms of ADHD along with less apparent impairments of executive functioning. It is a set of rating scales designed to evaluate executive functions related to ADHD in individuals aged three years and older. It includes adults up to 44 years of age. The assessment will be taken, uh, will take between 10 to 15 minutes um, to administer and it has a CL2R qualification code. For more information on any of our qualification codes, please um, see our website or ask me if you have any questions. OK, so I thought I'd go through the updates um, from the Brown ADD scales, just so then you get an idea of how we've updated the test um, and you know what we chose um, to revise in the newer version. So the new name acknowledges the importance of the role of executive functioning to ADHD and ADHD related symptoms. The sixth cluster, which is action, has been added to the adolescent and adult form, making it possible to evaluate impairments associated with hyperactive um, and or impulsive symptoms of ADHD across all forms and age levels. There are new and updated items. The items were revised to improve clarity and clinical relevance. Items were added to the adolescent and adult form to accommodate the addition of the sixth cluster. The items were reviewed and revised as necessary to ensure the scales reflect the changes made to the ADHD diagnostic criteria in the DSM-5. There is now a total composite score um, available across all forms and age levels in the Brown EFA scale. This change simplifies the interpretation of the instrument while also making the results more consistent and comparable for individuals who may be evaluated across several age levels over time. The goal in the Brown EFA scales is to identify the symptoms that are most problematic for the individual. Therefore, the revision of the severity based system of response options is more appropriate and clinically useful than the frequency based system in the previous edition. Allowing people to report which symptoms they perceive to be problematic rather than assuming that more frequency occurring problems or symptoms are more problematic provides clinicians with more precise responses than a frequency based one. Another update um, is that the norms were updated with both combined sex and separate sex. A parent rater option was added to the adolescent forms aged 13 to 18 years and a digital delivery option is now available through Q Global. The Brown EFA scales provides sorry, the Brown EFA scales provides statistical and base rate information for comparisons among the composite and cluster scores. So on your screen, you'll now see the test structure. So the items on the EFA scales are grouped into six clusters 
each representing an underlying aspect of the author's model of executive function and impairment as it relates to ADHD. The first is activation. This cluster addresses difficulties the individual may have, organising tasks and materials, estimating time, prioritising tasks and getting started on work like tasks. Focus. This cluster addresses the problems individuals may have in sustaining attention and focus for work like tasks or in shifting attention when needed from one activity to another. Effort, this cluster addresses problems an individual may have in staying alert and sustaining sufficient effort for work related tasks. It also addresses difficulties with processing information, um, completing tasks and maintaining performance consistency. The emotion cluster addresses difficulties an individual may have with regulating emotional reactions to the extent that they take over too much of what the individuals are thinking or doing. The memory cluster addresses problems an individual may have with forgetfulness in daily routines and recall of learnt materials. And then finally, the action cluster addresses problems individuals may have in recognising appropriate behaviour and self-regulating their actions. And the Brown EFA consists of a parent, teacher and self-report form over four age levels. They can be administered using Q Global or via a paper questionnaire form. If you're using the paper forms, you can either hand score with a hand score worksheet or you can score it with Q Global. You can see on your screen which forms will be relevant for each age range. For example, you could use a parent form for ages 3 to 18 years. OK, let's look at the applications of the Brown EFA. It can be used in a number of ways. The scales can be useful in an initial screening measure to offer a quick way to identify individuals who are likely to meet the diagnostic criteria for ADHD. It's effective in targeting people who should receive a comprehensive evaluation for ADHD. For people suspected of having ADHD, the brown scales can be used as part of a comprehensive evaluation. The scales are not diagnost diagnostic themselves, but they can be used combined with other measures to make or rule out a diagnosis of ADHD. They should not be used in isolation to make diagnostic decisions. They can be used in repeated administrations to assess changes in ADHD over time. Comparing assessments can help in determining if a treatment has been effective. And using Q Global, questionnaires can be compared across time points and rater to rater. Comparison data includes the statistical significance of the change in scores and base rate of change. The scales can also be used in research. And then moving on to scoring, the normative score reports are T-scores and percentiles. T-scores have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. Percentile ranks indicate the percentile of the normative sample scoring at or below a given raw score. And on your screen, you can see the T-score range and classification table, which can also be found in the manual or the Q Global reports. Finally, the standardisation. The normative sample was divided into six age groups among three types of rating form. So three to five years for the parent and teacher form, six to seven years for the parent and teacher form, eight to nine years for the parent, teacher and self-report form, 10 to 12, the parent, teacher and self-report form, 13 to 18 was just the parent and self-report form, and 19 and older, just the self-report form. Within each rating form, each group was composed of 200 participants. The normative sample had roughly an equal number of males and females per age group, and the proportions of each ethnicity in each group were based on an English-speaking ethnic proportions of individuals within 
the corresponding age group of the US population. The normative sample was stratified according to four education levels based on the number of years of school completed, grade 11 or, or less, high school graduate, one to three years of college, four years or more of college. The US was divided into four major geographic regions according to the census data, Midwest, Northeast and South and West. OK, so just going to take a few minutes to show you Q Global quickly. So let me just remove that presentation off of your screen. So this is Q Global signed in um, here you've got the list of your examinees um, or clients or patients um, so what you would do is you would click on the person that you're going to do the test with you would press assign new assessment type in the brown efa and then you can see that it comes up with all the various forms and the age ranges so just remember what the age range of the examinee is select the age and the form that you want to use. Let's do the parent one in this example today, press assign. A new window pops up and then it gives you these three options. So as I said, you can use the paper form and manually enter the raw scores into Q Global to create the report, or you could use in-person online on-screen administration, or you can send a link via email for remote on-screen administration. For today's session, I'm going to show you the in-person online. You can activate a test session lock, so then they can't go on anything else on your screen. We won't do that for today's example. And then you press launch assessment. So when you're ready, you begin. And then the questionnaire will start to come up on your screen. So you have to enter your details. And then you'll see that the questions come up on the screen. So you would then enter the answers as you go through and so on. I won't go through all of them. All of the pages look very similar and they go through each item. OK, um, the other things I wanted to show you was the report. So um, we have, let's show you the individual report. So we have the individual report. So you have the examinee information, the parent or teacher information there. Then we have the T-score profile graph. So you can see all of those six clusters along the bottom, as well as the total composite score. And Q Global has placed all of the scores into this score profile graph. You have a score summary table, which gives a gives obviously the name of the, the cluster, score description, and then you have raw scores, T-scores, percentile ranks and confidence intervals all worked out for you. You have the classification of the T-score range there just for your reference. And then below we have the comparison tables. So we have cluster to total composite score comparisons here or cluster to cluster comparisons. And then underneath you can also opt um, to have the actual item responses for each cluster so you can see exactly what was said, which is useful if you're not going to be using a record form. The other reports that we have are the uh, multi rater report. So as you can see, we've got three different forms in this example and exactly the same layout, but we've added in all of the scores into the table and into the item responses. So. P is parent, S is self-report and T is the teacher. The other one is the progress report. So you can see here we've got the same mother um, who is filling out the form, but just about a year apart. So you can see that we've put that so you can see their progress or decline over time. OK. Great, so hopefully you found that useful. Um, as I said, please feel free to get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you.